Good kill, good kill. Hey, good kill. Hey guys, uh, I hope you're doing well. We're doing something a little bit different here today. I get a lot of comments of people asking, uh, you know, basic concepts of, you know, Mar and why do you survive the missiles that are shot at you, but your missiles always hit the other guy. It seems people are kind of, uh, some of the newer people to the channel, maybe they're not so familiar with some of the concepts of uh, air to air engagements that we have discussed in the past with attack free reviews and that kind of stuff. So what I've done here in today's video is I've brought back one of those attack views from back in the day. So if you're interested in learning some of these concepts, uh, check out this tech view. We discuss MAR, we discuss, you know, chaff, uh, when to decoy a missile, the crank, gimbal limits. A lot of these things are being discussed in this next next tech view. So if you want to make sense of the videos that you're watching, uh, this will dramatically help you with that. Also in the pinned uh, comment below, I'm going to have another video that teaches you other basic concepts. So if you want to check that out as well, if these are things that interest you, this video uh, should be useful to you. You. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, watch the tack view here. Okay, guys, so having a look at the tack view portion of this uh, of this little fight here, uh, we have me and the Strike Eagle. We have a Patriot site here at Anderson Air Force Base. So worst case scenario, I could have fallen back to that. We have our two J-10s protecting the uh, Chinese submarine here. And at about 40 miles, we fired the first two AMRAMs, which, you know, were honestly experimental. Uh, I didn't think they would hit, but the F-15 told me to shoot, so I shot anyway. Uh, hit him with two more uh, a couple miles later at 39 and 35 mile launches here. And so talking about the defensive maneuver here to defeat the Chinese PL-15s. We're going to rewind a little bit. So basically what happens here is we push the bandits into the gimbal limit of our radar uh, as we defend here. First thing you'll notice is that we're diving. Uh, we're diving into denser air. This creates more drag and friction on the missile. Um, I guess one of the major components to talk about here is that missiles have a finite fuel. Uh, typically a Fox 3 will have anywhere between 7 to 12 seconds of burn in the missile, the fuel. Once that fuel is depleted, that missile now has to use its own kinetic energy to hit the target. That's all it's ever going to have. And now it's your job to defeat and to bleed that missile's um, kinetic energy. Bleed that missile's energy so that you can survive. It can't hit you. Uh, every time, the way you do that is by forcing the missile to turn. Every time you force the missile to turn, it bleeds energy. Okay, like this is the missile turning to hit you. Every time it does one of these... It bleeds energy um, so basically that's why we dive down because now that the missile has its own finite kinetic energy and it's bleeding that every second we're going to drag it into denser air which will increase drag which will increase friction on that missile we also have turned we've set a an offset here and the offset as you can see if this was the straight line the offset is something like this okay whatever degrees your radar allows again it's the gimbal limit we'll talk about that uh, but again, the idea there is that you're forcing the missile to pull lead to try to hit you. And this turn is bleeding the missile's energy, as well as the fact that it's being, you know, dragged down into denser air. Um, now, what do we, when we say uh, gimbal limit, how do we know what that is? Imagine this is your MFD in your aircraft. You got your bandit locked right here. This is your bandit. He's in the middle. You locked him up. Okay. Uh, then you offset, you do this, the bandit gets dragged to either left or right, doesn't matter. It's your, your choice which side you want to crank to. Um, the bandit ends up here at the edge of your radar screen. This is the gimbal limit of your radar, okay? And so what is that? Imagine this is your the nose of your aircraft. This is your cockpit. This is your nose cone. Inside of your nose cone... You have a radar dish. You'll have to excuse my drawing here. I know it's, I'm no Da Vinci. Um, so that's your radar dish. And let's say your bandit is over here. Your radar dish, this is a gimbal. It's like a joint, let's say. This missile turns this way, or sorry, the, the radar is capable of turning this way and this way. 
only a certain amount, right? Maybe 145 degrees is your total gimbal. Um, when you have a bandit over here and you have your radar dish looking over here. So let's say it's like this. It's looking at this bandit and it's all the way to the edge of its gimbal capability. This is called the gimbal limit. Okay, that's, that's what that is. So now we have to talk about the MAR. Okay, so the MAR is the M-A-R, the minimum abort range. Okay, uh, I'm writing with a mouse, so again, I apologize. Uh, we have the MAR is, let's say this is a, a separation between uh, the bandits here. Let's say this is X, okay, whatever range that is. Because the MAR changes based on altitude, right? Um, it's basically the turn, the, the distance you need to abort so that you don't get hit by the missile so that you can run away. It's basically, you know, an escape zone. Uh, it's, if this is the Mar and I'm on the edge of it and he shoots a missile, I can turn and I can run and the missile will not hit me. Okay. However, if the Mar is like this, let's call that Y. Okay. And I am inside the Mar by a factor of... I don't know, Z. okay? I'm this far inside the Mar. When he shoots that missile, I will not be able to turn and run. When I try to turn and run, that missile will have enough energy to hit me. Okay. At this point, the only way to defeat this missile, again, you cannot turn and run. Your only option is to decoy that missile. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to hit a notch or a beam in order to defeat that missile. Now that we have to talk about the notch and the beam, you see these, these very complicated concepts here. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into it. There's some research you can do yourself. I don't want to talk for 35 minutes here, but basically the notch is, or the end the beam is when you, and I'll differentiate between the two in a second here. Uh, when you go 90 degrees, uh, to the incoming missile or aircraft radar, uh, what that does, is kind of like a Doppler shift thing. The, the Doppler radar is looking for movement towards or away from itself. So when you go perpendicular, there's no movement away or towards itself. Some people get confused by this concept and they go, well, the ground is, is uh, you're still moving closer to the bandit yourself. No, because the ground is also moving closer to you. It's about relative movement. Okay. The bandit is now a part of the ground clutter essentially. And so you can't tell the difference because the bandit relative to you is not moving towards or away from you. So they fall off radar. This also works for the missile radar. Uh, yeah, the radar inside the missile makes it difficult for it to see you. Okay, perpendicular to the bandit. Now the difference here between the notch and the beam, the notch requires ground clutter. Okay, so let's switch over to the radar here. When you defend down, let me defend a little. Okay, so when you imagine you're the radar in the missile, you're looking down at the target and let's pretend he's already in the notch. I'm not here, but let's just say I was, you see, and it's, there's no relative movement away or towards me. He now blends in perfectly with the ground as I look down, right? I'm not going to be able to see him. Now he's invisible to me, but if he was up here, if he was above my radar, this is him below my radar. If he's above my radar or co altitude with me, I can look at him against the blue sky makes it much easier to see. So this is the notch. In the notch, you need ground clutter. In the beam, you need chaff. Because he can see you, you need to confuse him with a chaff cloud, which makes it much more difficult for him to differentiate which one of these he needs to hit. Okay. Okay. So now taking all of those concepts and applying them to what we're doing here, what we're doing, we've drag the missile down into denser air. We've offset gimbal limit to continue to provide guidance for our own missiles as we defend. We crank the offset. And then once we establish that we've all, we're gone all the way down, there's no more room to dive. What we're going to do is turn perpendicular to the missiles into the notch. Oh, and uh, by the way, this is one thing I was going to say back when we were talking about, you know, looking at the bandit above the blue sky and below. Uh, a good a good example of that is the Gulf of Sidra 1989 incident where the Tomcats positioned themselves below the Libyan MiG-23s so that they didn't have to pick them out of ground clutter. 
they could look at them against the blue sky, right? So that that's a good indicator of how that was you know applied in real life. Um, but so okay, so back to this. So you see the missiles are now coming, and you know I don't try to turn and run because we're inside the Mar. The PL-15 has a massive Mar compared to the Amram. I had to get into the Mar to shoot my own missiles, but so now I'm in it, and so there's no running. I don't run. I just decoy the missile by hitting the notch. The missiles miss, and they hit the water. I recommit. Uh, two of my Amrams hit this guy up here, so that J-10 dies up high. Second guy survives my two Amrams, recommits, shoots a Fox 3, another PL-15 at me. I shoot at him. I double tap him. And you can see that his missile hits the water because, again, I notch it, right? I'm not even trying to run from this guy's missiles. There's, there's no point. Um, and luckily, one of those actually hits him. One of those double taps hits him. I think it was the first one. Um, but I shoot a second one because he was still on radar. It takes a second for him to hit the water, so radar was still giving me a return, so I shot the other one. That hits the water, and that's it. That's the engagement. Okay, guys, so that pretty much sums it up uh, how that you know BVR engagement went down against the two J-10s. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.